So here's a quick example of how you can use Mixing Station and limit uh, users' access to the main mix without relying on them remembering to do that when they connect to the mixer on this screen. So here you'll see I'll connect, and I'm not limiting permissions here, but the layout itself doesn't show anything but this column of buttons over here, rep each one representing one of the different aux outputs on my XR18, and nothing shows up until I select one of those buses, and then you get the mixer panel, you get a master fader, and you get a reverb return for that aux bus, and same for all of the rest of the, the buses here. Now, there are a couple of tricks to sort of making this work. Um, the first is that in my layers, you'll see I only have two layers. There is a, a blank layer that's completely empty. There's nothing selected in there. And then there is a layer that has all of the input channels that they could possibly need lined up there. Now, when we go in to look at the layout, what you'll see, um, so right now that, that layer with all of the channels is displaying but by default, it comes up with just the first blank layer. And when you look at this aux bus button, you'll see that it selects, sends on fader, aux one, and it is set to only turn it on. That's important because you don't want them to be able to turn that off and get back to the main um, front of house mix, right? Then the second action selects layer two. Um, and again, you want to make sure that that's set to only on. And then that's repeated for each of these buttons, one through six, so that when that's tapped, it selects the second layer that has all of the channels on it. And at the same time, um, it also switches you to the send on fader for that particular aux bus. Now for these other two elements, You'll see here on this channel strip, there is a setting here for visibility, and that's set to only send on fader. Your other options are you could have it always on or not send on fader, but we want that always only send on fader. And the same thing for this reverb return if they want reverb in their monitor. Um, the last little trick is that for these uh, channel faders, one of the things that you want is you need to remove the um, normal channel button from there, and that's done through this uh, set of sort of custom channel strip settings. Here's the one for custom monitor, and you can see all I've got is channel icon to create a little space there, the fader, and a pan. Um, so that's all that they get access to on that cha particular channel fader. And then each of these along the top are just labels. And you can see when I select this one, so this is just a label. It's always visible. Um, color mode is set to, uh, theme is regular, color mode set to background. And then for the text, they have, since this is channel three, so this is current layer offset one, two, three, config, and name. And so that shows the, the name of that channel. And you can even set the color so that if you have this set up in your channel strip, set it to dynamic channel, current layer, offset, and then that way the colors of those labels will also follow whatever color you have set up in your channel strip. So this is not perfect. Um, for one thing, they could still go in and load a different layout or create their own layers. You can turn that top menu off um, if you want to, but then it becomes really difficult for you to ever get out. And they could still, even when that top menu is turned off, there's still a back arrow back here that will take them out of this view and give them access to, to everything. Um, so that's not really an ideal solution either. But this makes it really difficult, and they'd have to be really intentional about trying to go in and edit the front of the house or do anything but switch between one of these six aux mixes. Of course, they could also mess with somebody else's monitor mix by accident, 
Um, but that's pretty rare and and unlikely to happen unless they're they're doing that you know on purpose. So that's it.